bringing hope to many around the globe, transforming lives into legacies. Live in Word with Pastor Mensah Otobiel. And now, today's word. I'm starting a new series uh, from today, and I, I trust that in the next few weeks it will be a great blessing to you. The main series is Spiritual Protocol. Spiritual Protocol. But for this first part, our subtitle is Access. Access spiritual protocol and we are talking today about access how to gain access now as you know i know most of you may not be familiar with such a title it is not like you can make it or how to move mountains um, it has a title that needs some definition so i'm going to go through defining what i mean by spiritual protocol first what is protocol when we say protocol what do we mean a protocol is an accepted code of procedure or behavior in any group or situation that is a very broad definition but in various industries and in different areas it has specific uh, definition but it is an accepted code or of procedure or behavior in any group or situation. That simply means that in any group and in any situation, there is an accepted way of behavior. In any group, in any situation, there is an accepted way of behavior. Nations relate to each other on the basis of protocol. So when Ghana is going to relate to Nigeria or Nigeria to Togo, or where we're relating to America or any other country, there is protocol. And normally in most diplomacies or, or in ambassadorial levels, protocol is very critical to determining how nations relate. World trade is governed by protocol. As a matter of fact, computers relate to each other on the basis of protocol. Protocol is what gives you access from one to the other. Protocol is very important. It is the accepted way of relationship. Family members relate to each other on the basis of protocol. As a matter of fact, even in this church, protocol is going on. I am here speaking, you are there listening. If somebody jumps from the listeners and comes up here, my security guys here will quickly jump and move the person from this stage because the person has broken protocol. There will be other situations where I am there and somebody is here. Not long ago, the praise singers were, were singing, and I had to sit. That is the protocol. When they are sit singing, I sit. When I'm talking, they sit. It is the accepted way of behavior. It is called protocol. Protocol determines the way we eat, the way we dress, the way we walk. Every aspect of your life is determined by protocol. Uh, so simply put, protocol is doing the right thing at the right time in the right way. Doing the right thing at the right time and in the right way. If you look at our government of Ghana, we have state protocol that regulates some of the very important things that the nation does. So protocol is very important. You can break it and get into a lot of trouble. So that is protocol. What is spiritual protocol? What is spiritual protocol? 
And I would want us to read from 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 39 to 40. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 39 to 40. And it reads, Therefore, brethren, desire earnestly to prophesy, and do not forbid to speak with tongues. Verse 40. Let all things be done decently and in order. I want you to know the verse 40 particularly. Let all things be done decently and in order. This is the Apostle Paul speaking to the Corinthian church. The Corinthian church was a, a very liberal, free church. They were very enthusiastic about their spiritual gifts, but they were very disorderly in their conduct. And the Apostle Paul made them aware that although it's great to be spiritually gifted, to be anointed, to be used by God, they had to do things in decency and in order. What was Paul talking about? He's saying there has to be proper protocol in the house of God. There has to be proper protocol protocol. So spiritual protocol is the spiritual codes and procedures that regulate orderly conduct in God's house. The spiritual codes and procedures that regulate orderly conduct in God's house. So when we come into God's house, there has to be orderly conduct we conduct ourselves in a way that is decent and in order it is that that I call spiritual protocol in other words it's protocol but it's protocol related to our spiritual life and so we're going to look at access access how to get to places, how to move from where you are, where you can go, where you cannot go, how to enter into God's presence, and how to receive audience from God. There is protocol in how to relate it to God. So, John chapter 14, verse 1 to 6. John chapter 14, verse 1 to 6. It says... This is Jesus speaking. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know. And the way, you know. Thomas said to him, Lord... We do not know where you are going, and how can we know the way? Verse 6, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So Jesus is talking about access. Access, how to gain access to God, to the Father. And Jesus says, in spiritual protocol, no one gets to the Father except through God. Jesus. Protocol is the established procedure for getting things done. Now, for the purposes of this message, as I talk about access, I'm going to use a metaphor. And the metaphor is going to be that of a door and how to enter the door. I'm going to talk about a door and how to enter into it. That is the metaphor, and I'm going to use that to talk about spiritual access before God. The door, you're entering. That's the physical. But that is telling us a spiritual reality of how to enter into God's presence. Now, for a moment, I want you to imagine that you are standing in front of of a door. The door is locked. You don't know what is in there, but you hear that there is somebody in there uh, that, that can help you. 
but you are standing outside the door and you want to get in. Now, there are several things you can do. You can stand out there and hope that the door will open by itself, which normally doesn't happen. You can stand out there and beg somebody to help you to get there, then the person must have access, otherwise he can help you to get there. You can stand out there and cry and cry and cry and cry and cry. And that's a good effort, but tears don't open doors as far as I know. So what would be the protocol? What would be the procedure? What would be the right way to enter this door so that you can go in there and have access and receive the things you're looking for. There has to be a procedure. There has to be an order. What is the protocol? What is the spiritual order? If we want to gain access to God, how do we do that? Now, if the door is locked, I suppose it has been locked with a key. So, if you're going to enter the door, the first thing you're going to need is you're going to need the key. Everybody say the key. You're going to need the key. And in spiritual protocol, if you want to enter God's presence, you have to have the key. And the key is the name of Jesus. The key is the name of Jesus. So you want to enter God's presence, you can stand outside and, and cry and cry and shed tears and, and hope that somebody will help you and you can go through all of these things but you're still outside the door. If you're going to enter, the door must be unlocked and for it to be unlocked, you must get the key. And what is the key? What is the key? The name of Jesus is the name of Jesus. John chapter 16 verse 23 to 24 this is what Jesus says. And in that day, you ask me nothing. Most assuredly, I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. Until now, you have asked nothing in my name. Ask and you receive that your joy may be full. The key to unlocking the door to gain access is the name Jesus. Why is that so? Because the name of Jesus gives us the right credentials to approach God. It gives you the credentials to approach God. When you come before God in the name of Jesus, we take on the identity of Jesus. And because we have taken his identity upon us, we are now authorized to go in. Now, the person who has the key must be authorized. Don't you think so? Now, if, if you were coming to your house and somebody had opened the door and you know that you haven't given the key to, somebody, to that person, what are you going to call the person? A thief. So not only must he have the key, you must have the authority to use the key. So somebody must give you the right to use the key. You can't just call the name of Jesus. You must have the credentials to call the name of Jesus. And when we call the name of Jesus, it's almost as if you put a key into the lock and you turned the lock and unlocked it. The name of Jesus is what gives you the credentials. When an ambassador is appointed to Ghana, and we hear it all the time, we see it in, in the news, and we say that the Japanese high commissioner has presented his letters of credence, or the American ambassador has presented his credence, letters of credence, or the Burkina Faso ambassador to Ghana has presented letters of credence to the president, and sometimes they show those things on TV and you don't really understand what is going on, because the president is wearing this fanciful kente, and they are in the nice house, and this guy comes and presents some papers, and, and then the president accepts it, and they sit down and supposedly say a couple of things, and then afterwards he goes home. 
What is he doing? He's presenting letters of credence. The letters of credence says that this is my authority to operate in your country by the authority given me by my country. In spiritual protocol, the same thing happens. When we take the name Jesus, we are announcing that we have now been authorized by heaven to have access to enter the store that many people want to enter in and cannot enter in. We have access. And not only do we have access, we have the authority. We are not thieves trying to break in. The name of Jesus is what gives us the credential to unlock the door to God's presence. So the name of Jesus unlocks the door to God's presence. Now, if you have a key in your hand and you're trying to unlock a door, you have to believe in the key. You have to believe in the key. Because the key is powerful by itself. The key is effective by itself. And in the same way, the name of Jesus is powerful by itself and it's effective by itself. Now, the door may be big. Now, granting that the door is is a very huge door, you want to enter, very huge, solid, whatever, solid oak or steel door. And you look at the key. And this time, the key sometimes is not even a metal key. It can be a card. Or the key can be a pin number. As heavy as the door is, if you punch in the pin number, or you slip in that card, or turn that metal key, the door will be unlocked. But sometimes when you see the size of the door, and the size of the key, you may think the key needs help. Don't you think so? You look at the key and you say, this key needs help. So sometimes when people are using the name of Jesus, they think it needs help. So they're going to say, in the name of Jesus. Because somehow they think, this key is not strong enough. I, I need to put some power behind the key. Or some may stump their feet in the name of Jesus. And somehow they think if they, if they help the key, it will function well. For your information, the key doesn't need extra help. The key has the right the authority and the configuration to unlock that door all you need to do is have confidence in the key and turn it you don't need to add to the name of Jesus you don't need to dramatize the name of Jesus you don't need to mispronounce the name of Jesus you don't need to stretch the vowels and emphasize the consonant the name of Jesus You have authority. You don't need to cry on the key. You don't need to to stamp on the key. You don't need to turn around around the key. The name of Jesus is your authorization, your credential authority to have access to God's presence. And when you lift up the name of Jesus, at that time, God sees you as Jesus entering. And he gives you access the same way he gives Jesus the access. The name of Jesus is the key that unlocks the door to God's presence. Sometimes you hear people say, but I don't know how to pray. Well, can you say Jesus? Well, if you can say Jesus, then you can pray. Because all, I, all you need to do is to say, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I come before you, Lord. And when you say that, it's no longer you coming. It is Jesus coming. Because you come in his name. It is the key. Now, many times people use the name Jesus, but they, they, they're not really confident. It's, it's almost like you have the key and you are hitting the door with the key. Ka, 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 ka. You have the key, but you are not putting the key where it is supposed to be. You have to place the key where God wants the key to be. At the mention of his name, every knee 
shall bow. The name of Jesus is the key. It opens doors. It unlocks doors. It has authority in heaven. It has authority on earth. It has authority in Satan's dominion. When you use that name, demons bow. When you use that name, heaven responds. When you use that name, earth bows. Everything in the created order is subject to the name of Jesus. It is your key. Don't misplace it. Don't lose it. And don't try to improve it. It is powerful by itself. It is able to unlock the door. All right. So let's say you are before the door. First protocol, you need to get a key. You use the key, you unlock the door. So you hear the law on dock unlock, the door unlock, correct? So every, every, you know it's unlocked, but you stand there. And you say, well, the door is unlocked, it must open. You have unlocked the door, but you haven't opened it. There's a difference between unlocking a door and opening it. And in most doors, you realize that after the lock has been unlocked, there's a door handle. And you have to learn to turn the door handle to push the door open. So it's unlocked. Potentially, it is available to you. But how do you enter? You have to turn the handle. And the handle is what I call faith. Faith is the door handle. Faith is the door handle. Many people have used the name of Jesus. They've unlocked the door, but they're still standing there, hoping that somehow things will happen by themselves. No, after the name of Jesus has been used, you're going to have to unlock or turn the handle of the door. Romans chapter 5 verses 1 to two says therefore having been justified by faith we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God we have access by faith we have access by faith so the name of Jesus will unlock the door, but faith is what really opens it. Faith turns the promises of God into a living reality. Faith turns the promises of God into a living reality. So, if I I'm, I'm trying to get my request to God. I have used the name of Jesus. That means the door is unlocked. But then I have to enter. What am I going to need? Faith. What does faith do? Faith receives the word. Believes the word. Receives the promise of God. Faith says God has said it. I believe it. That settles it. Faith says, if God says, I am blessed, I am blessed. Now, that is the word you are going to use to turn the handle of the door to enter in. Otherwise, the name of Jesus by itself, without faith, will still keep you outside the door. And there are many people who have used the name of Jesus in prayer and still are not making any way progress. Nothing. They're not moving. Because they are not observing protocol. You have to come by faith. And how does faith come? Faith comes by hearing the word of God. In other words, faith is not presumption. Faith is not hope. Faith is not ebeyeye. No. That is hope. It will be well. Everything will be all right. Take it easy. Things should be fine. It's great to have hope. But faith says, God says it, it is mine. Faith does not push our expectation into the future. 
Faith receives it now. Thank you for listening to Living Word. To interact with Pastor Mensah Otebi, like his page on Facebook. Follow him on Twitter at Mensah Otebi. Email Otterville at centralgospel.com or call plus 233-302-688-000.